Hi and welcome to this quick studio tour video. Uh, this video will be about some of the lo-fi video footage and camcorder equipment I've been picking up over the last few years. It's something I really fell into by accident really after finding a bag of tapes on a car boot cell and just amazed by the things that people will throw away like recordings of their own family. So I've typically been using this to uh, project over the top of my music equipment while I play uh, to give a nice sort of overall vibe. Yeah, so uh, let's get started. Uh, here we are in the corner with all my lo-fi video bits and bobs. A 14 inch uh, CRT TV, I've got a, a Panasonic VCR and a Sony uh, DVD recorder. Uh, over here we've got the projector that I use in a lot of my videos up on a tripod. Um, lots of found footage tapes and discs and more camcorders, converters and such like. So if we start over here, um, we've got the uh, Philips 14 inch uh, CRT TV and a, what was that, Panasonic uh, full size VHS VCR and a Sony DVD recorder. Got another camcorder up here, which is a mini DV type, currently cabled into the DVD recorder for transfer. Um, if we start with the TV, a um, CRT TV isn't strictly necessary for this kind of thing, you can do it on a modern TV, uh, but all this footage is captured in standard definition interlace format, and that will play back more smoothly on an old TV than it will, generally speaking, on a modern one. That's because modern TVs will de-interlace the footage, um, which means that the fields are turned into frames. Now, um, Typically, they're captured at 50 or 60 fields per second on a interlace uh, stamp, uh, on an interlace format, whereas these these will be can do it down into 25 and 30 frames per second on a modern TV. Uh, so the playback will be smoother and more as intended on a original CRT TV like this. Uh, you'll notice it looks like it's flickering like mad. Uh, that is not what I'm looking at with my eyes. That's just the way that the this camera is capturing it due to the way that the picture is built up on a screen like this. Um, so we are connected from the DVD player to this CRT TV with a SCART cable, which is this kind of ugly looking thing. But that means that we get full RGB uh, connection. That is a signal per red, green and blue part of the image, which gives us the sharpest um, that we can expect, really, of this kind of technology. We get right in there. No, can we really see that? Yeah, so we've got a fairly sharp picture um, showing each pixel. Um, all the connection types are a composite video like this, which is just one. So you've got one pin and a ground, which delivers the entire signal. That will give a much more lo-fi image with lots of uh, degrading around the outside and also this is connected by S video which is this type of connector which has lots of small pins uh, that is similar in quality uh, to full RGB right so let's talk about the uh, VCR for a minute this is a, a, a VHS VCR it takes tapes like this in case you've never seen any um, this is an analog format. It captures its image onto magnetic tape. You can see there on the reels. Um, this is connected into the DVD player, which is in turn connected to the TV. Also over SCART, although the uh, the most quality you're ever going to get out of this type of video recorder is composite, so it'll always be a little bit fuzzy. Um, I picked this up at car boot sale. I think probably paid about five pounds for it but unfortunately I don't have the remote I can use most of the functions on it uh, I can record and play back into the DVD recorder but I can't change the quality what I'd really like to be able to do is to lower the qualities down as far as it goes and that would make it really scuzzy and dirty looking but we're stuck on standard uh, but that's not too bad uh, it's not a bad machine actually and it can importantly rewind super duper fast uh, which is quite useful um, so the DVD recorder, why a DVD recorder? Well, I have in the past bought cheap um, video to USB converters and 
used software to transfer directly from things like camcorders into my computer but I've never really got on with them. I did an entire tape once only to then find that it was jerky and it had mixed up the interlace frames so it looked absolutely horrible. Uh, so I've kind of settled on this idea as the best way of going about. I record directly um, over cable onto disc and then I can use that to play back either into my projector uh, in little loops or just in in full but then also I can take the disc out put it straight into my tower computer drive and rip the file directly to the hard drive so it's kind of kills two birds with one stone really I can use it to uh, do quick little videos or I can use it to rip this also has a hard drive um, recorder built in and obviously you can flip between the two you can record onto the hard drive as well but I don't tend to use that uh, I mostly just use it for DVD it is not super old but it's old enough that it's only standard definition um, it doesn't have HD freeview or anything like that built in so I've got a yeah, S video connections here on the front with my two audio connections coming in from this camcorder um, I think I paid 30, 35 pounds for this, not a huge amount again, at an auction house. Um, so you may end up paying a little bit more, I think, if you get one directly. Not sure about the prices of the of VCRs at the moment, probably not very much. Um, honestly, I paid two pounds for this te television um, with a bunch of VCRs in another auction lot, but most of the VCRs had to go in the bin because they were knackered. Um, I think I've kept one which I sold on uh, a profit of like maybe £20 so yeah that's a good way of going about it if you want to if you don't mind scouring through bins of rubbish and throwing things into the recycling bin then that's a good way of getting hold of things oh by the way on top here we have a a video mixer with a wipe and pattern and audio mixing although I haven't really used this very much. I was really hoping it would mess up the video, but it actually does a really clean job of passing the video through and out again, so it's a bit, a bit disappointing. I was kind of hoping it would ruin everything. Um, so yeah. Oh, yeah, so um, talking of remotes again, very exciting. That's got the DVD recorder remote, which is very important because it's basically useless without it. The TV would work without that, but I have that. Um, yeah, so. In case you're way in the future and you've no idea what a DVD looks like, DVD looks like that's a DVD. Um, this is a mini DVD, which tends to come in the cameras that they that take that format to record into. So just going back to the TV for a second, uh, you may notice this. So this TV has chopped off the edge of this image. Um, it, this is not uncommon with CRT TVs. Uh, they tend to have a lot of overscan, uh, so there's a lot of image that's lost over the edges. Um, some modern, more modern uh, CRT TVs have the option to adjust the picture, but this uh, is not capable of that, so we're always going to have that little bit missing. Uh, it's not destroying the transfer in any way because the DVD is still capturing the whole thing, but we just can't view the entire image. So moving on to uh, recordings and cameras, uh, here's a bunch of found footage that I've picked up uh, generally with the cameras. These are actually uh, my family's uh, camcorder tapes which were recorded back in the 90s. Uh, these have been transferred onto full-size VHS tapes, but they would have been captured on the VHS-C, which is this smaller format. Uh, they're actually, they've actually got the same tape in. You'll notice these uh, spools are the same shape and size as the main ones in here. Uh, so the camera took these small tapes and then all you needed to do was put it in a converter like this. So that tape goes in there, the, um, the tape is stretched across the edge and you've got another spool. So that goes straight into a normal VCR so it would convert directly over without having to actually transfer it from one format to the other. Although we chose to put them on these big tapes just to keep them because we shot quite a lot of footage. and. These are cheaper. Um, so yeah, you'll notice I don't have a VHS-C camcorder at the moment because I've got this converter, so I don't need it. 
Other types are uh, 8mm, which is this, Video 8, I should say. Um, this is the PAL version, uh, they're a bit smaller obviously. So these have a n much narrower profile than the HSC. So yeah, you can't put these straight into a, a VHS player because it's a completely different format. They did make, I believe, uh, VCRs that were compatible with this, but I've never seen one. Um, so you need a camera to play that back, which we'll come to in a minute. And then also, even smaller again, is mini DV tapes. These are actually digital, but they still capture onto spools of magnetic tape. Um, whereas the other two formats, they're both analog. I think, I hope so, I think that's right. <laughs> Someone will correct me, I'm sure if I'm wrong about that. And then also, um, mini DVDs are quite common um, in camcorders. I've got one of those over here as well. Um, but again, you don't need a camera to play those back. You can just stick them straight into a, a DVD recorder or a DVD drive to play them back if it's got the correct size hole in the middle. Yeah, so all these here, these are more mostly eight uh, video eight tapes and a few mini DVs. These are all the things that people have discarded with their cameras. That's mostly where my footage comes from uh, for my videos is uh, when people have just sold the camera with a load of tapes with it and not bother to get rid of the footage. Um, so yeah, I like to play it back on projector over my videos. Uh, because it looks cool, but also it kind of obscures people's faces, uh, which I like to really, just to be respectful to people, just to obscure their faces so they're not all over my videos. Um, right here, and let's in this round. So around the back of here, we've got a composite video again, uh, but luckily S video on this particular model, and even um, a VGA, so you can connect it directly to an older computer. Uh, that this projector also has a remote. Boring me talking about remotes again, but important if you want to access all the features. And I think you can pretty much use this with the the buttons on top. If you you manage to pick one up and it doesn't have a remote with it, you can access all the menus and things with those buttons there. Um, so cameras, yeah. Um, this one is a mini DVD format which is quite obvious, looking at the shape on the side. Uh, this one happens to have night vision, which is one of the reasons I kept it, because I don't really need it, uh, but it shoots quite cool night vision footage. Uh, this is my, what are you? This is a mini DV, with all its outputs on the side there, and this is the Video 8, with composite and mono audio. I don't have a stereo one of these at the moment, but I think most of the footage I've found is also mono, so I'm not too bothered. Um, importantly, if you're looking for this kind of thing, make sure you've got batteries, make sure you've got chargers. Um, I've got one or two cameras kicking around that have no chargers or possibly missing a battery, and obviously they can't be used. And uh, they're becoming increasingly difficult to find replacements for, so yeah, make sure you watch out for that. Um, in terms of getting footage out of these cameras, um, when it comes to Mini DV, um, you've got a few different options. Uh, this one has S video out, which is what we talked about earlier, and then its AV comes out in a 3.5mm jack, which is quite common. So you'll have a cable like this with a TRS, that's tip, ring, ring, and sleeve with four connectors on it, which will get you this on the other end. Uh, there are different types of these though, so you may find either the plugs need to be swapped around or just need to find the right type of cable. This one has S-Video directly out. Also, sometimes uh, cameras or other equipment will have 3.5mm S-Video connection with kind of the same setup. Um, some cameras like this one, have these sort of annoying proprietary connectors. I, I have no idea what that is. That says it's audio video, but that's like what Sony's own spin on how to get video out of the camera. I don't have the cable for that, and I'm not even going to bother trying to find one. 
So that is worth bearing in mind if you do buy something like this and it has a weird connector on it, you're going to need to find the right cable. Whereas these kind of things, these are really common, obviously super duper common. On, even on modern TVs you find uh, composite connectors. So tend to go for simplicity over hideously complicated. Um, also on Mini DV we have a firewire connection. This will firewire directly into my DVD recorder. Uh, probably into a computer, although I've never actually tried it. Also, I don't have the cable, <laughs> so I've never done that either, but I should be able to capture digital to digital with this, but I haven't tried that yet. Another thing that's worth mentioning if you're going to do this is you might also need to grab a tape cleaner or two. Now, these are obviously going to need to match the size of the tapes. So this is a mini DVD uh, cleaner, a uh, video, an uh, 8mm cleaner and a VHS full size uh, cleaner. I have also got VHSC cleaner for when I had one of the cameras, but I don't need that at the moment. Um, I have occasionally bought cameras in the past and believe them to be uh, not working. and just stuck a cleaner in and they just come up just fine. Uh, it's worth, they're not very expensive generally I find um, worth doing properly rather than trying to get in there with a cotton wool bud or something because you risk damaging things. Just to finish off, here's a little bit of an example of something that I managed to find recently. This is uh, some cine film that someone's filmed onto their mini DV tape. So what they've done is they've projected it from cine uh, onto a screen and then set up a camera and filmed this. Uh, I do also have some uh, cine film in the attic at the moment, which is really quite cool footage, but I don't have a projector for it at the moment because I denoted that. Uh, but that's another way of getting found footage is you can find cine film like this, which is not a video format. It's actually uh, like a series of photographs, just like your projector in the cinema. Uh, but there's no sound. You just uh, you just get the clutter of the projector as you play this back. Uh, so this is an even older sort of format, but uh, they've been nice enough to record it onto their video tapes for us. So yeah, this is definitely going to get used on something quite soon because it's awesome. Right, I think that'll, that covers everything. Yeah. Let me know in the comments below if you need to know anything. And uh, let me know what you thought of this video. Uh, thanks very much for watching.